Well, the Matura National Park is a very expansive area of forest reserves, but it's mainly inland. It's a couple thousand hectares. The Grand River community is basically the river connects the park to the community. The Grand River, river flows out of the national park. It empties within the Grand River Bay. The river serves as that connectivity between the park and the community. So that when you put the park into, into perspective, Grand River is in a sense one with the park. It's one of the few areas that you will still find pristine forests. It's a few, one of the few areas you could just walk in your backyard and you could go to a river and get clean water. The very first time I went beyond the Rio Seco waterfall and actually went to the very top of that waterfall. I remember standing there where the waterfall starts and it's pouring down and looking down at, at that pool that takes place under there. I was like, wow, that, that is amazing. And this is ours here in Trinidad and Tobago. This is right here home. It's important to protect our forests and our coastal area because a lot of us, we depend on it for our livelihoods. Being a rural community, we have a lot of persons who still do fishing and this is for the benefit of their families. For me personally, going out to see the fish, it's one of the best times in my life. It's peaceful, even if you're not getting a bite at the moment, it relaxes you. It's fun and it's also dangerous. But this is what people depend on for livelihood, so you need to do it. It needs to be done, but it's also actually quite beautiful if you want to try it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an experience you'll never forget. This area should be protected because it is home to, set, to endemic species such as the Pawi. The Pawi in particular, our Pawi here in Trinidad is only found here, so it's endemic to us here in Trinidad. Well, the, the Pawi or piping one is one of our endemic birds here. Um, at any given time, you could come here and get from one to over 20 plus birds. It's the only place I will dare say actually showing an increase in the Pawi population. So have utilization within the Matura range, utilization in the sense of plantation forestry, where we replant forest species. And sometimes it might be pine, as you see in the background, or forest hardwoods, or local forest hardwoods, mixed species such as mahogany, sip, apama, those things. We also have nesting sites for our sea turtles, such as the leatherback turtles. Globally, leatherbacks are on the verge of extinction. Trinidad is one of the few remaining sites globally where leatherbacks are still nesting and where the numbers are consistent. So Trinidad really is now recognized as the go-to place to see leatherbacks. While you can see them in other sites globally, there is no other site in the world where you can see leatherbacks with such ease and with such easy access in terms of accommodation and facilities. And you consider Grand River as the primary nesting site for leatherbacks in terms of densities. People argue, why protect a turtle? What people don't recognize, besides leatherbacks being the, an the most ancient of all sea turtles, leatherbacks consume jellyfish. They eat twice their body weight in jellyfish per day. If therefore there are no leatherbacks, most of the beaches that, that are deemed the best bathing beaches in the world will become uninhabitable. So leatherbacks make beaches beatable. So besides enjoying the, the, the aesthetics of looking at these ancient animals, they are critical in the whole ecology of the oceans. Their role is critical. If you pluck them out, you are therefore creating a, a, a total imbalance that humans would not want to be part of. Grand River is one of the few places as a hunter on the outside, if you come in here and you shoot a powie or a monkey, you find yourself in serious problems with the community.
Well, true nature seekers, we can do it all by ourselves. And we would have collaborated and continue to collaborate with the Forestry Division to assist in the protection of our species. By ensuring protection of this area, it ensures the social economic development of the area, ensuring livelihoods are protected, and ensuring persons are able to not just protect, but earn an income and thereby develop the area economically. Nature Seekers was able to get funding to train 30 participants in the community in jewelry making. In our community, being a rural community, we still have persons who are unemployed, we have single mothers, so we use recycled gas bottles. We break them into pieces, we clean them, and then we change them into beautiful jewelry that I'm wearing now, and we provide employment for mothers of the community. Well, I think the biggest threat to the environment from where I sit would be the whole issue of climate change as it relates to the very erratic weather patterns that we are experiencing. And what you find happening is that you have the level of rainfall that we are getting. It's causing a lot of erosion in the forest and that erosion is bringing a lot of silt onto the nesting site. If you have a lot of illegal logging and so on, that will damage the land, the roads, and when rain falls, all that extra silt comes down into the river and follows the river. And any extra rain, the river easily um, overflow its banks and flood out the, the communities. And we know that whatever happens upstream affects downstream. So if the area isn't protected, we don't just risk losing habitat and wildlife, we also risk drying up of rivers and it will ultimately affect us as a population. In terms of humans, we haven't really seen a negative impact as yet on this side of the island. But where the national park is concerned, the threats that humans will possess will be things like overhunting, deforestation of areas that provide habitat for animals, illegal activity within, within the confines of the park. So if the forest is impacted, it would ultimately impact you know, the water supply to the country. For me, I believe that we should be able to leave a place better than we met it. And the hope is by conserving, protecting and going in and doing the necessity, now we will be laying the foundation for something even greater and better to come. My hope is that the generation of children who are being born to adults like myself will be so civic and environmentally minded that there'll be no need for advocacy. Uh, they would articulate and advocate the right thing and it would become a way of life. If, if, if that could happen, then I think we would have, we would have generally served our purpose.